Hey guys, welcome to another episode of On Two Wheels. We're here on the Gulf of Mexico, right down the coast from New Orleans. And we are gonna ride these retro triumphs to Birmingham, Alabama, where I'm gonna race this bike at the Barber Vintage Festival. But first, we gotta get there. We flew to New Orleans last night and headed straight down to Bourbon Street to go to a few bars and soak up a little bit of that Creole culture. You gotta do it when you're in New Orleans. We may have underestimated the power of the hurricanes over at Pato's Piano Bar, but anyway, when we rolled out of bed in the morning, we went over to Transportation Revolution at Triumph dealership in New Orleans, where we picked up a Thruxton 900 and this Bonneville T100, which are not quite as old as they look, are they? Yeah, these bikes certainly look vintage, but fact is, they are brand new and they are going to be perfectly suited for the Bar Revenge Festival. Indeed, where there'll be lots of vintage planes, vintage motorcycles, and vintage, vintage people. people, exactly. So, if you guys are wondering how these bikes actually work more than just eye candy, which they obviously are, we're wondering the same thing, actually, and we have about 400 miles to Birmingham, Alabama, in order to find out. So we set off on our new retro triumphs. Airy on the Bonneville T100 and me on the Thruxton. We had tuned in some time so we could take the scenic route for this trip, along the Gulf Coast, through Mississippi and into southern Alabama. After a night in Mobile, we would head north via state and county roads to the town of Leeds, just outside of Birmingham and home to Barber Motorsports Park. Neither one of us had spent much time in this part of the country, so it was a good excuse for an adventure. For me especially, the seat time was valuable because I was supposed to race the Thruxton in just two days. So riding these things gives you the impression of being on a classic bike. I mean, it, it feels and looks and sounds and behaves like a, a vintage motorcycle. Yeah, absolutely. And it really, I mean, you know, it. Uh, it speaks to, to Triumph's design that, that people who don't know as much about motorcycles, you know, think that it's actually old. And yeah. people who do like motorcycles know what Triumph are trying to do and they enjoy it, they like it, they want one. The original Bonneville debuted in 1959 and after iconic success in the 60s and 70s, the motorcycle receded into the shadow of more powerful bikes from Japan and Europe. Triumph brought the Bonnie back in 2001, totally redesigned from the ground up, and it's been a resounding success. So much so that it spawned a whole range of Bonneville variations. The Scrambler, America, Speedmaster, and of course, the Thruxton. As it turns out, Triumph brought the Bonneville back at just the right time. It's finally old enough to be cool again. So yeah, you've never ridden a Thruxton before, what do you think? Well, it does remind me of a vintage motorcycle and not all good, I have to say. Um, I'm not sure if the foam in the seat is from 1959, if that's original seat foam, but it doesn't work for me. The Thruxton seat isn't ideal for road trips, but to be fair, it wasn't designed for that. It's supposed to be a retro statement with modern underpinnings, and that's exactly what it is, all for around $9,000. The Bonneville T100 shares the same 865cc parallel twin and steel chassis, but there are a slew of differences, from gauge faces and fenders to different handlebars and foot pegs. The motor is super capable. Uh, it pulls, it's got good torque. I mean, it's not really powerful, but it's got good feel and it's very linear. Um, the brakes, it's got stainless steel brake lines. It's only got a single disc, but you get pretty good power from it and excellent feel from the lever. And you don't have to deal with points and you don't have to deal with cleaning or adjusting carburetors. I mean, it gives you the look the feel, the experience of a vintage bike with all modern technology so you don't have to deal with any of the crap that comes with having a 40-year-old motorcycle. Exactly right. Sure enough, our modern classics ran without a hiccup. These bikes are great fun and this was an awesome way to experience them. A leisurely ride through a beautiful part of the country at a perfect time of year. We took in the sunset over the Gulf of Mexico and cruised into Mobile just in time for a fried fish dinner. The next day we headed north, away from the bayou and deeper into the Bible Belt. It was a day of Alabama State Roads, 225, 89, and our favorite, Dallas County Route 83. There it is, man, track entrance. Right, coming up on the right. Finally, the mecca of motorsports in America. 
I'm pretty excited. I have to say, it's been a while since I've been to a track I've never seen before. I'm getting excited. And this is a really nice track. So Barber, this isn't even like a public raceway. This is privately owned by George Barber. And he basically created it for himself because he's a huge motorsports enthusiast. And he's nice enough to let people like us come in and people like Arma come in and host these huge events and just attract thousands of people and share the facility. And as you're gonna see, it is quite a facility. All within these walls. All within these walls. Sweet. George Barber made his millions as a dairy farmer and opened his motorsports playground in 2003. There she be. Barber Motorsports Park. Dude, this is such a great racetrack. The grounds are home to a world-class racetrack and a stunning museum, all set in a park-like landscape. I'm already seeing faces that I recognize I know. from vintage racing. It's going to be a bit of a reunion for me. Indeed. Ari and I grew up in the vintage racing community. Our dads competed on classic bikes throughout our childhood all over the eastern United States and Canada. We spent most of the summers in our youth raising hell in racetrack paddocks. Pretty much exactly what we do now. What? Oh. I may have knocked a cone over already. Dude. <laughs> racing was the main draw for us, but there's a lot of other stuff going on at the Barber Vintage Festival. How much are you asking for this thing? 300 negotiable. 300 negotiable. If you're looking for a project bike, this is the place to be. The swap meet is vast. Guys in the big cities would flip their lids over how cheap the bikes are here. Looks like it's got a little bit of an oil leak, huh? No. It's supposed to be like that. The cylinder's supposed to be glistening. It's just got, <laughs> just got a nice sheen on the paint, that's all. Yeah, oil sheen. It's $900, so it probably has a pretty significant oil leak. At the opposite end of the spectrum is the Barber Museum, which contains a collection of vintage motorcycles and cars that will blow your mind. And unlike the swap meet, it's all pristine and none of it's for sale. The museum includes classic machinery from every era, large and small, iconic and forgettable. There's even an MB5, a little two-stroke that's near and dear to my heart. This bike is a real piece, the Britain V1000. If you don't know about this bike, once you finish this video, you should Google Britain V1000, read the Wikipedia article, watch the YouTube videos, and read the book. This guy was, a, by all accounts, a complete genius. The museum alone deserves many days, but unfortunately, we had a Thruxton race bike to track down back in the pits. This is your machine, man, your race bike. <laughs> it's got a little dreadlock nurse chick on the side. So it does. Looks good, powder coated frame. It's got the, look, there's no exhaust on this side. They went two into one. Oh uh, yeah, two into one. Rolling suspension. I mean, things looking pretty trick. Check it out. GP shift. GP shift. Clip-ons. Nice. Seems so it's a true race bike. Had some work done to it. Cool, man. I'm excited. Against all odds, we made it here to Barber. Yep, we rode all the way from New Orleans to Birmingham, Alabama to attend the Arma Vintage Festival. And we got to tour the museum, which was incredible. We got to check out the expansive swap meet. And really, we just scratched the surface of what this event has to offer. Absolutely. And more than that, we learned that these Triumphs aren't just eye candy, but they're really quite a bit of fun to ride. Yeah. Built to a price point to a certain extent, but all things considered, a great value and pretty awesome bikes. For sure, and you're gonna get to spend a lot more time in the Thruxton because in the next episode, Zach is going to race the Thruxton. So, tune in next time to see him wobble around on the racetrack and get his ass kicked. See, this is a perfect example. This guy from Alabama is passing us and his wife is probably saying something like, God damn it, I can't believe those guys are standing between me and a fried chicken dinner. And he is saying, no, those are old motorcycles. They probably can't go very fast because they're old. They look like they're from the 60s.